Here are, here are the solutions to the finding net force uh, practice sheet that we had. For this, I want you to keep in mind, as for all these worksheets, the best way for you to learn this stuff is not to just watch me do it and fill in the answers. The best way to get this stuff is to practice it first and then come back um, and look at the solutions after you've tried it at least once. All right. Especially for, for if you weren't in class for anything, that's the best thing. Try it once, use your notes, give it a shot, and then come back and see what the answers might be. So on, on, this, on this sheet, our whole goal the entire time is just to find the net force acting on the object. That's it. That's the only thing that we're doing. So uh, for number one, we have a couple of free body diagrams. We're going to use those free body diagrams to find the net force. The way we're doing that is by adding the forces together. Some of those forces might be positive, some of those forces might be negative. So we're going to find the net force, and we're going to see the direction of the net force. So for A, net force is going to be 8 newtons minus 5 newtons. So that net force is 3 newtons. And what we want to do here uh, is keep in mind that when we're adding them together, net force means adding the forces together. Uh, we're going to make that up force positive, that down force negative, and that's going to tell us how to add them. Positive 8 plus negative 5 is 8 minus 5. So my net force is 3 newtons, and that 3 newtons is going to be up. Uh, for B, same deal. Net force is going to be the upward force, 8 newtons, minus the downward force, 18 newtons. Uh, so that net force is negative 10 newtons. That mean, and then that net force, that net force is down. Now, for part C, what we're going to do for part C is we're going to go through and make all the forces to the right positive. So the 4 newton force is positive. The 6 newton force is positive. And then we're going to make those forces to the left negative. So when we add all of our forces together, the net force is going to be 4 newtons plus 6 newtons minus 2 newtons minus 12 newtons. So that net force comes out to be negative 4 newtons. All right, and then the next one, we're going to make the force to the right positive. We're going to make the force to the left negative. That's going to tell me it's going to be 4 newtons minus 2 newtons. So our net force here is going to be 4 newtons minus 2 newtons. Uh, so that net force comes out to be 2 newtons. Uh, and it points to the right because it's positive. Now, for E, these things are at 90 degrees to each other. Because they're 90 degrees to each other, we need to build a triangle with it. We're going to have to do some triangle math. So we're going to do 5 newtons over, 12 newtons up. Our net force is going to be the hypotenuse of that triangle. So in order to find it, we're going to need to do the Pythagorean theorem. 5, 12 plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. So that net force is 13 newtons. Any time that we have forces that are 90 degrees to each other, we're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. We're going to have to do triangle math to find the sum. We can't just add and subtract those like things that are all in the same direction. When we're at an angle, when we're at 90 degrees to each other, we have to do that triangle math. Same thing for F. So for F, we're going to build our triangle. We'll go 3 newtons up, 4 newtons over. We'll get the hypotenuse of that triangle. Square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared gives me 5 newtons. So my net force is 5 newtons. And it kind of points up in that little direction there. All right. Number two, we have a rock that weighs 55 newtons. So here's my rock. The weight is 55 newtons. I have an upward force of 65 newtons. So if I want the net force, we're going to make the upward force negative, the downward, sorry, the upward force positive, the downward force negative, and when we find our net force, we're going to add 65, subtract 55, and our net force comes out to be 10 newtons, and since it's positive, that's 10 newtons up. And then part B, we have an elephant on a cart pulled by a rope, so we have our elephant, It's pulled 15,655 newtons north, 
and it's pulled 12,655 newtons in the opposite direction. So we're going to make that 15,655 positive. We're going to make friction because it's backwards. It's in the opposite direction negative. So to get our net force, it's the tension force minus that friction force. So we get 15,655 minus 12,655. And those directions came from which way everything pointed. And when we do that math, it comes out to be 3,000 newtons. C, we have the bucket hanging from a rope, exerting a force of 225 newtons. So for our bucket, I'm oh, sorry. For our bucket, we have an upward force of 225 newtons. We have a downward force of weight. That's the force of gravity. It does not tell us the force of gravity. It tells us the mass. And so with the mass, we can calculate the weight. The force of gravity down is the weight of the object, and we always calculate that by taking the mass and multiplying it by the acceleration due to gravity. So we have 25 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. We get 250 newtons. We're going to make that down. Sorry, we're going to make that negative because it's down. We're going to make the 225 positive. So my net force is 225 minus 250. My net force is negative 250, 25 newtons, and it's down. So what made this one tough was that we know there's a force of weight acting on it. We're just not given that force of weight, so we have to calculate that force of weight. We know how to do that. All right. Number three is a little bit different. We're not going to be given enough information about forces for question three, so for question three, we're going to have to use information uh, that, that in Newton's second law to find it. So for number three, we got weight, normal force, and the net force is to the right. That's in the same direction as the acceleration. All I want to do is find that net force. So net force is equal to mass times acceleration. The mass of that cart is 60 kilograms. The acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared. So my net force comes out to be 150 newtons. Part B, I've got an airplane with a mass of 500 kilograms. We've got thrust, net force that way, lift that way. The engine's exertion isn't enough information. I've got more stuff going on with that. So if I'm going to find the net force, I need to find the acceleration. And this problem gives me enough information to do that. I have the initial velocity is zero, the final velocity is 120, and the time as six seconds. So my initial velocity is zero, final velocity is 120 meters per second, time is six seconds, and I want the acceleration. So we're going to use the V equals V initial plus AT equation, plug everything in. And then if we solve for a by dividing both sides by 6, we get that the acceleration is 20 meters per second squared. So we're going to do all the kinematics stuff that we did before so we can find acceleration. Once we have the acceleration, net force is just mass times acceleration. Uh, so we're going to take 500 newton, kilograms sorry, times 20 meters per second squared uh, to get 10,000 newtons as our net force. An elephant has a mass of 250 kilograms and it falls from an airplane. So if we look at the free body diagram, we just have the weight of the elephant acting down. That's going to be mg, as always, so it's 200 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. It comes out to be 2,000 newtons. That's the only force acting on the elephant, so my net force is 2,000 newtons. So what we did here was practice finding net force two different ways. One way is by identifying every force that acts on the object and then adding all those forces together. The other way is by finding the acceleration of the object and taking that acceleration and multiplying it by the mass.